Hello everyone, this is Noah, and today I'd like to talk a little bit about the Uraken, or the back fist strike. Most of the time when people do this strike, they have a tendency to hit with the full flat back of their hand. Uh, so essentially when they uh, swing their arm out, their hand remains in a stationary position, locked in line with their forearm, uh, and swing this way. Uh, now, that does give you a good solid structure to hit very forcefully with. Uh, so you can really swing that in there, uh, essentially like a baseball bat, and just slam it into things, which works quite well for what it is. There's another way to work your Rodokin, however, uh, which is a little bit more difficult to accomplish. Uh, but it actually works quite well. And that is, if you look at your hand in a straight, flat position, lined up with the forearm this way, when you close your hand into a fist, it naturally has a tendency to turn the hand upward, this way. So what we can do is use this natural uh, slope action that happens to the wrist, this natural uh, curling backward motion, to actually facilitate the strike. Uh, and by doing so, that allows us to, instead of hitting with this large flat surface, uh, we can focus our energy on these two knuckles uh, at the front, uh, very much the same way you would with a Seikinski, a punch. So if your hands are relaxed or in a straight position this way, maybe you've been uh, in a guard position or, or parrying, you can shoot the back fist out and instead of leaving it flat here, as you extend, if you make a fist, just that action of making a fist will move those knuckles back that way slightly, which means that instead of hitting with this flat part, you're hitting more with the tops of these knuckles. Uh, and that can be a little bit difficult to do because the timing involved uh, is more complex than just swinging a flat hand into something but it does allow you to really dig those knuckles in. Now, because this position is bent this way, it is not going to feel as solid to you when you hit something uh, as this nice flat position is. Uh, you're going to feel like you've got to hold this position, it's going to not feel uh, as powerful. So if you were trying to hold this position, for example, and swing it into something, uh, it won't have quite the same impact that you're used to, but what it is going to do is dig in more. So uh, this is one of those situations where if you're hitting pads, hitting a bag, that loud smack sound may sound great, may feel great, uh, but what that's really telling you is that you're hitting with a larger surface and a uh, smaller, quieter noise uh, is more along the lines of what you're going to end up with because you're hitting with just a very small area. So that's something that you can look at with your strike to, instead of just the simple swing the flat of the hand version of a back fist, uh, you can actually whip the hand out and when you close it, naturally dig your knuckles in. Uh, this is actually something that is quite fast to do, uh, so it isn't necessarily something that uh, is a power strike uh, as much as it is a speed strike. So this is a very good thing to do on the way to other things. So for example, if you're doing a parry pass type of motion, uh, if you're in close clearing arms, it's really easy to knock a back fist uh, along somebody's chin just as you go into something else. And in sport fighting, uh, whether you're fighting uh, with or without uh, gloves will make a difference, but you can do the same thing from your guard position, shoot this out and extend this way so that you actually dig those knuckles in. And you won't have the same impact uh, just by virtue of gloves or headgear, but it's still something that you can work in there uh, and get a little bit more of a, a speed reaction out of it because your hand can be relaxed, you don't have to lock it in place. And that relaxation will help you whip the hand out with a little more speed.